Greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the whole Bible tour in three years. Turning our Bibles to Psalm 119, verses 81 to 104. This uh, octave from verse 81, it begins with uh, the uh, Hebrew letter Kaf. And um, in verse 81 onwards, in this octave especially, he talks about many kinds of troubles because of God's word and uh, because of people around that he was facing. In verse 81, he says, My soul faints with longing for your salvation, but I have put hope in your word. The next verse, he says, My eyes fail. And then 83rd verse, he says, I am though, uh, though I am like a wineskin in the smoke. A wineskin burns away, so giving so much of smoke and it slowly um, depletes into ashes. Uh, and uh, he talks about waiting upon the Lord in the next verse in verse 84. How long must I wait, O Lord? How long will you not uh, um, uh, take revenge over my persecutors? And then verse 85, he talks about uh, the pit that the arrogant are digging for him. And he goes on in verse 87, he says, and they almost wiped me out of the earth. Now, all of these put together, the psalmist is trying to say that he was traveling through kinds of affliction wherein he did not he did not see the lord working as expected now this is definitely the part of anybody who believes the lord we expect something but sometimes we uh, you know god doesn't work according to our expectation because god's ultimate end is different from what we believe to be our ultimate end god's ultimate end is for his glory it is for our eternal good and it is for our transformation. This is God's eternal destiny for his glory, for our eternal good and for our transformation. And so God does things always in the light of these three things. He does things only so that they'll result in these three things. And when God does things, many a times our motive is not that, our destiny is not that. And so we get disappointed. This is what the psalmist was going through um, uh, consistently. And he says, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not uh, able to see what I expect. I'm not able to see what I really desire. But yet the psalmist hopes for the Lord. Now, when we don't get what we expect, then what should we do? We should leave ourselves into the hands of God knowing that, Lord, this is what I feel. This is what I feel is good, but I know that you are all wise and what you decide is the best for me. What you will is the best for me. And so we just need to leave ourselves totally into his hands and he will take care. He will lead us in the right path and he will do what is good unto us. He can never do what is bad unto us. He can never do what is uh, injurious to our eternity. And so um, the best thing is to leave ourselves in God's hands. And it can be, it can be uh, taxing temporarily, but it is going to definitely reap a great benefit on the long run. And then uh, from verse 89 up till verse 96, this octave begins with the Hebrew letter Lameth. And um, from verse 89, uh, he talks about God's uh, creative power. And why is he talking about God's creative power is when you look around this big universe and how God has created everything, how God is sustaining everything, then with great confidence, we can put ourselves into his hands and he say, and tell, Lord, if you have done all this creation, if you've done all these big things, then after all, my life is a very small thing. And that is the reason why even the Lord Jesus is turning our attention uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, towards creation. He's asking us to look at the birds, the uh, flowers of the uh, field, in order to know that if if this creation is, uh, is so beautifully and so precisely uh, managed and sustained by God, then obviously we who are much more valuable than this temporary creation will be taken off, uh, taken care of by the Lord. So that should be a trust that um, the, my God is the creator. And if he is the creator, then uh, then he is my savior. And uh, he, is, uh, he has plans for me for eternity. God doesn't have plans for eternity for anything else in this uh, world except human beings, not towards trees, towards animals or towards mountains or hills. None of this he has eternal plans plans, but he has eternal plans towards us. So obviously, um, we, this is our great assurance that if he has 
so grandly done everything that is temporary how much more will he take care of me and um, in verse 89 he says your word is eternal the heavens are stand firm and uh, the earth is endures because you have made it uh, established it that way and um, the laws you establish they they stand forever uh, the law of gravity or the law of attraction um, every law every scientific law no no science can tell us tell us what the laws are but science cannot tell us where the law began or why the law began it can only tell us what the law is whereas bible gives us a very clear uh, astounding sure foundation to stand on it's it's the most credible um uh, intelligible reasonable thing to do that we just don't believe in chance to create laws but we believe in an all wise sovereign god as the law maker of everything around in the universe uh, and so um that that's a that's a most reasonable intelligent thing that a rational being can ever do and then um, in verse 92 he says your law has been my delight and that's why i was able to uh, get through affliction now when when we delight in our own comfort or in in something that is that is not permanent that is uh, not worthy then obviously we will be shaken but when we del- when our delight is something that is immutable when our delight is in something that never changes then our delight also never changes so we have to uh, anchor our delight onto god who never changes and from there on uh, he goes on to say save me o lord for i am yours and uh, i have sought your precepts now this is a very very beautiful word in verse 94 he says for i am yours it is uh, it is much easier to say god is mine because we can claim all the promises the nature of god and so many things but then the psalmist is giving himself to the lord in this says lord i am also yours now this is a very very beautiful counterpart that's our responsibility god is ours that is his provision but we are his we have to give ourselves to him as our responsibility now we belong to him by creation we belong to him by salvation and we also belong to him by uh, handing over responsibility everything into his hands and then in verse 96 he says to all perfection i see a limit it can be any perfection whether scientific or emotional or uh, philosophical or uh, uh, every perfection there is a, a limit uh, beyond that we cannot move but to your commands there is no end because god is perfect absolutely perfect infinitely he is he is perfectly perfect whereas uh, every other thing is imperfectly uh, uh, made and so uh, his laws are perfect and so when uh, we, they are infinitely perfect and that that's the pathway that is worth taking and uh, in the uh, octave from uh, verse 97 up till verse 104 uh, we see uh, it uh, it all begins with uh, the letter mem and uh, um in in this uh, uh, octave especially uh, he he talks about uh, his desire for the law his desire for the lord in verse 97 he meditates on it all day long previously he said all night long previously he said when i wake up it's about your law but now he says all day long so whether it is consciously or unconsciously whether it is out of duty devotion and out of delight it's all about the word of god and he says um three things one that that i am made more wiser than my enemies in verse 98 now uh, by keeping the word of the lord you are doing what is right and so uh, what is right will always stand what is right is going to stand not only in this world but also for eternity and you will not make mistakes enemies make mistakes but you don't make mistakes because you're not uh, you know um, responding to the enemy you're not changing your course according to what the enemy is doing but your course is fixed it is going in the path according to god's word and so you don't change you are not fickle minded like the enemy you don't uh, respond to the enemy but you, your response is just going according to the word of god and so you you uh, you uh, behave and you um, handle it very responsibly and then in verse 99 he says i have more insight than my teachers teachers research and they study and they think over and get insights but i have more insight because uh, because i uh, i'm dwelling and i'm meditating upon the eternal law of the lord and so i have more insight than them and then he says more understanding than the elders elders have experience
experience and so they have understanding but uh, i get my understanding because of the ancient law of the lord so this is the commitment of uh, the uh, psalmist and he says i'm better off than my enemies than my teachers and also than the elders so he says though i'm not better equipped than them by age by uh, um, by my ammunition or by my um, knowledge my intelligence yet it's your word that puts me in a better place than all of this because your word brings a transformation to my soul your word brings integrity to my walk and your word brings uh, brings an eternal hope for my attitude that's the best thing that can ever to happen to me and finally he says in verse uh, one or three the sweetest thing that they knew was honey and uh, he says uh, that's the best thing but your words are more sweeter um, uh, than honey to my mouth and uh, verse one or four he says i hate every evil way, evil path because that's the best that i can do for myself Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this great understanding that the psalmist could have because, because he followed your word. Help us also to stick to your word and, uh, oh Lord, live the best life we can because of your word. Jesus' wonderful, precious name we pray. Amen. Mm-hmm.